And don't forget it's Braxton. <laughs> Good evening. You've just tuned in to the A Godly Woman's View, and we're certainly excited about what God is doing. Um, are you? Can you guys see me on that side? It's not showing me. Um, I see you. It's mm -hmm. not showing me. Uh, let's see what's going on here. It's not showing. Okay. It's not doing it. Oh, blood of Jesus. Okay, yeah, I can see I'm you. Sorry, God bless you. You've just tuned into the new normal. I mean, Lord Jesus, I'm wrong show. A godly woman's view um, talk show. And we're certainly glad that we're able to come into your homes on your iPhones, your iPads, your desktops, or whatever you might have. You know, this is a great day, and this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Is anybody happy today? Listen, I will need you to help me to build this um, uh, audience on tonight by tagging, by sharing, by just just helping us to get to where we need to go. Everything um, that is going on right now is I'm having some difficulties here, some diff technical difficulties. If somebody could just bear with me for one minute. All right. We're going to ask our Apostle Hicks to open us up with prayer. Amen. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we come now tonight. Hallelujah. Asking you that you will come in the midst of us right now. Hallelujah. Let your mighty and perfect will be done in the mighty name of Jesus. God, give us clarity right now in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to do everything decent and in order. Help us to be on one accord, God. Give us wisdom. Give us understanding of your word, God. <laughs> that we might share your word on tonight, God. Hallelujah to the heart of your people, God. In the precious name of Jesus, we thank you for Pastor Anita Spaulding, oh God. We thank you for putting it in her heart, God, to share with the world tonight yes. your heart, God, your will, your word, and your way. In Jesus' name, we pray and we claim it done. Amen. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Yes. We thank God for having this opportunity to be able to come into um, your homes and into your space and let you know that a godly woman's view is on the air. Listen, we have had um, over the years, it's been about 12 years, maybe a little bit more, a godly woman's view started on blog talk radio, live stream, um, uh, my space and the Facebook, so many different um, social networks. And we have reached over 800,000 um, viewers um, through this yeah. program with different topics and subjects that God has laid, laid on my heart. We've had exclusive interviews um, from people from all over the country. And I'm just grateful to God because God, he is good and he knows who he wants to reach and he knows how to reach them. Yes. Listen, we're in 196 countries and 50 states. And I am so grateful and thankful for each and every one of you that take the time out to watch each and every single Tuesday and any other day that we're on. I see the regulars are starting to come in. I see you, Mother Hayes. I see you, uh, Barbara Dreeden, um, a Pastor Benson. She, they just said Cynthia Hewton, uh, Natasha Owens. I see you. Oh my goodness, this is going to be so good. Mark Hayes, God bless you. He says, God bless you all powerful women of the most high. And yes, we do. We have some powerful women um, that are on this evening. Sabrina Williams uh, Dixon, uh, Michelle Baxter, she's giving a shout out. Listen, I need you to help me to build this talk show on tonight. Join this talk show because we're going to be talking about should a woman preach or should a woman pastor? So we're going to go in a little deeper on today, but I have some lovely guests that are unique and just, I mean, they, they are in the heart of God and the mind of God, and they are powerful. And that is um, in the form of our women um, uh, uh, in that are in the five-fold ministry gift. And we have our Pastor Brown, who's going to introduce herself. Pastor Brown, God bless you, woman of God. 
Good evening, and I want to tell you all to excuse me. The voice is almost gone. Had a very busy weekend, weekend, and so much going on. But we bring you greetings from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Dr. Cherise Brown. But I pastor the Highway to Heaven Apostolic Ministries. Because thank God I've been in ministry, preaching the gospel, trying to anyway, since the tender age of 19. I baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus at seven, filled with the Holy Ghost at the age of eight. And I've been running for Jesus a long time. And I'm certainly not tired yet. God right. bless you and glad to be here. Praise God. We have our Apostle DeWanda Owens, and I'm just going to tell you just a little bit of, about her. Um, she is a faithful servant and the proud wife of Brother Roosevelt Owens. Just say hello so that your picture will pop up. Hello, hello, hello. God bless you, um, Apostle Owens. She's a servant after God's own heart. Through ministry and guidance of the Holy Spirit, Apostle DeWanda has become a traveling evangelist, helping to build ministries, teaching leadership and prophetic, prophetic etiquette. She empowers leaders to walk the firepower, dominion and authority that God has given, known as a demon slayer by her colleagues in ministry god has proven himself through her life by the manifestation of miracles signs and wonders and as we go on in the program we're going to hear more from her so just say hello to everybody again apostle amen amen <laughs> praise god we have another dynamic woman of god in the person of our um a Apostle Karen Bettis Davis, Bettis Davis. God bless you, woman of God. Just let them know about you. you have to Greetings, move. everyone. Um, I am here in the city of Fredericksburg, Virginia, uh, the city of the peaceful ruler. Uh, mm. I have been in ministry for about 27 years. I pastored for 10 of those years and then I pivoted recently. And so I'm doing a lot of apostolic work traveling. Um, I've written a book on prayer. Uh, and um, I also have a, a, a grassroots effort called Girls Make Great Generals too. And uh, one of my newest endeavors that I absolutely love is uh, I am a sports chaplain. I am a chaplain for a football organization. My wow. dream is to become a chaplain for the NFL. Um, and so God had, God is moving me a little bit closer to that. So uh, that is my new baby. That is what I am enjoying most at this time. Uh, but I love the Lord. I'm available for whatever he has me to do. I always say I'm fully apostolic, which means I, I go where I'm sent. So God bless Amen. you. I'm glad to be here tonight. Oh, God bless you. Evangelist Ella Knight, yeah. just tell a little bit about yourself, all right? God bless. Yes, good evening, everyone. I'm Evangelist Prophetess Ella Knight of a call, chosen, sent, anointed, and appointed by Jesus Christ. Uh, because of doctrine of means, I ran for my calling for about a, a two weeks. But then God laid hands on me. And nobody else had to tell me that God do call women to preach. That's mm -hmm. right. <laughs> That's Amen. Right. Yeah. Linda Steinbeck, my God sister. My God, my God sister, and all the illustrious, beautiful women that are here, anointed women of God that are here tonight in our audience. I just thank God for seeing one more day. It was a crazy day today, but we do give God the glory. He brings us through. I'm Linda Steinmetz of Transformation New Life International Church here in Essex, Maryland. God bless you all. God bless you. Bless now you. we have another um, woman of God who is also a friend of the ministry, and her name is Elder Michelle Braxton. And I just want you to say hello to everyone, and I'm going to just pull out some of your bio. Elder Braxton. God bless. Unmute. Unmute. Oh, praise God. Sorry. I'm sorry. Greetings, everyone. God bless you and God shalom. Bless you. Glad to be here. Elder Braxton is a servant leader where she is recognized as prophetess and functions in the office of a prophet. She is also an ordained elder un under the leadership of the apostles. Wait a minute. 
She is also an ordained elder serving under her pastor, who is an apostle in the Lord's Church for over 25 years. She holds other positions. She has been preaching for 27 years. And she is married to the handsome Gary L. Braxton for 20 years. She has two sons, a daughter in love and a granddaughter. She first became an, she became an author in 2014. Him in Victory, an audible story of her journey and victory against age. She has an Amazon store and there's so much to her and her motto is there is grace for the place, which means you have been given everything you need for the assignments to serve. Say hello to the people. Hello, God bless. Thank you for allowing me to come and be a part of this wonderful um, company of women. And we're so glad to have you too. Praise <laughs> Jesus. Amen. Amen. We have our Pastor Angela B. Walker. <laughs> God bless everyone. I'm Pastor Angela Walker in the area of Birmingham, Alabama of ABW Ministries. I've been serving the Lord this year. We'll make 38 years of being saved. God saved me on October 28, 1984, and three nights later filled me with the gift of the Holy Ghost, and he called me, amen, as a servant of the Most High God, and I'm honored to be here on tonight. I am an author of Overcoming the Limits, You Are Unstoppable, Know That in Christ All Things Are Possible and Ain't No Stopping Us Now. God Whoa, bless you. Praise God. <laughs> yes, we have our Bishop Eva J. Nimmons. God bless you. Unmute. Just thank you for having me. I'm here in the Houston area. Amen. I'm, my leader is Archbishop Thomas E. Wallace with New Day Kingdom Assembly of Churches. And it's just a blessing to be here to talk about this subject, to just give um, knowledge to other women that are seeking um, what God will have them to do. And I just want to say thank you again for having me. Thank you for being here, everyone. Our apostle, Brenda Hicks. God bless you, woman of God, my God. dearest friend. God bless you, Pastor Anita Spaulding. It's such a blessing to be here tonight. I am Apostle Brenda Lumsey Hicks, uh, Senior Pastor of the Mount Calvary Missionary Church right here in the city of New Brunswick, New Jersey. Thank you for allowing us to come again and to share God's word. Yes, we have the youngest young lady and her name is Evangelist Tamara E. Williams. God bless you, baby. Grace and peace, everyone. My name is Evangelist Tamara E. Williams. I am the youth pastor elect and the house prophet of Tabernacle of Praise in the city of Patterson, New Jersey. I got saved at the age of five years old, filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost at seven. At the age of nine, I gave my initial sermon. At the age of 16, I was an ordained evangelist. I've been in ministry for 20 years, and I'm here to just serve everyone with the spirit of excellence and love. God bless you. Oh, this is so awesome. Then we have our pastor C. Anderson, Cynthia Anderson, God bless you. And thanks for checking on me almost every day, woman of God. I am Pastor Cynthia Anderson of the Greater Faith Hope Center in Rochester, New York. Um, I am married 39 years and wow. I have eight children and my church is a uh, young uh you no know, millennial church who like to jump, jump, jump. jump. Um, <laughs> we, we work in the community wherever I sit on the faith leaders round table. Um, it's a board of pastors that work within the community. So I am always working, enjoying my grandbabies, helping somebody uh, to know who Jesus is. Right? Yes, yes. This is awesome. You again, you're watching uh, a godly woman's view virtual talk show. And we're excited because we're reaching the masses and classes of people throughout our nation. And I have the privilege of being able to just um, have these women come on on tonight to talk about should a woman preach? 
Then we're jumping over to should a woman pastor. So we're going to start our conversation right now. And I know you guys are ready. That's watching. I see all of our VIPs, our very important people. Yes, you are. You're very important to me and those that are um, a guest on tonight. I see so many that's coming on. So I won't be able to mention all your names. So excuse it in love. We have Jennifer Lincoln. Uh, Sabrina Williams Dixon says greetings and blessings to everyone. Um, we have, I see, um, Vivian Thompson, God bless you, Aisha Watkins, she says, love you, Apostle DeWanda Owens, D.O. Ministries in the house. Um, then we see, I see, I see, I see, I see, Joshua Johnson, <laughs> I see, I see, I see, Mary Jeter, um, the Apostle, yes, Apostle Owens. Um, look like somebody's bringing their fan clubs on up in here. This is this is good when you got somebody that like you. But we want you to give a shout out um, for your own church. Put your church name there. Um, you could put your apostle or your bishop or your pastor. Oh, I think I see Bishop Elect Richard L. Spall in my boy. <laughs> Blessings to you. I better say something because I get off this phone. Oh my God. Blessings to you, Pastor Nita. Have a great and informative program. Mark C. Bryant Ivory. Blessings, women of God. Christopher Crown. Um, uh, God bless you. In Lynn Henderson. And we're getting ready to start. Well, I want to ask this question. Should a woman preach? We're going to start there, all right? Should a woman preach? Don't all jump up at once. Absolutely. Okay, well, go yes. ahead and say, go ahead, say it then. Go ahead. Absolutely. So in Joel 2, 28 and 29, God promises an innovation regarding how he would make his spirit available to all of us. And so with his spirit available to all of us, we have to do something with that spirit. He said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all people that sons and daughters would prophesy, and that is to foretell. So we would be delivering a message, sons and daughters. But you know, mm -hmm. some think that a woman should not preach. There are still in 2022 that some think or say that women should not preach, and they give the same scripture, because it's not that many of them, you know, <laughs> that tries to um, uh, to 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 help them stand on that argument, but uh, uh, keep going, uh, Pastor so, C. Yes, ma'am. So uh, yes, many do say today that women are called to preach or to pastor, but we have to stick with the word of God. And we understand that even today, Jesus unlocked the door for women to come in and, and he can speak and God can call who he want to call and wow. send who he want to What's send. But he said, I'm going to pour out my spirit uh, yeah. on all people. He said, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I'll pour out my spirit in those days and we are in those days where the spirit of god has been poured out on us with jesus he sent them said go tell them i've risen just like i said i would we look at deborah and i don't want to go on because all of the oh, women yes, have yes. something to say but we were messengers you know in the first century church uh first century times women were second class citizens right wow. and 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 we were beaten and and if we spoke up you couldn't be in the sanctuary with a man you couldn't really be in a room with a man you were told to go out and and your job was to fulfill the needs of the men of your master all right whoever was over you your husband or your your slave owner but jesus unlocked and freed that with his spirit god unlocked it and we have to walk it in it and that's true, that's true. We have to walk in what God has called us out of. He called us out of darkness mm -hmm. into this marvelous light. But he's got something for the women to do in ministry. Apostle Hicks. Yes, yes. I, I should, should a woman preach? Amen. If God called you, whatever he called you to do, whatever your gift is, that's what you should mm -hmm. do. But I'm just sitting here looking now again at Jeremiah 31 and uh, 22. And it simply says it uh, like this. How long will you wonder, oh, unfaithful daughter? 
the Lord mm. will create a new thing in wow. the earth. Wow. Hallelujah. A woman will, not shall, uh, uh, I want her to, uh, maybe, but a woman will surround a man. So how long will we go around listening to what men say or what men think about us when we know deep inside of us, like Jeremiah said, before you formed me in my mother's like womb, yes, you, you knew me. Hallelujah. So now how long will you stand on protocol? Huh? How long will you step back from what I know I have called you to do? Should a woman free? Let me talk about this woman. <laughs> <laughs> I've been called, anointed, and appointed, and I'm going forth. Oh my goodness, this is so awesome. Should a woman preach? But we have a comment from one of the uh, viewers, uh, Christopher Crown. He said, Previously, I never wanted to go and minister in a church where a woman is presiding over. But I have to do it nowadays because of the congregation who are both male and female together. And then T.J. Jackson says, God unlocked it. All right, uh, uh, Apostle Owens, Apostle Owens, and then uh, Pastor Angela Walker and Overseer Steinix, in that order. I wanted to talk about... The, the topic that we have at hand is should a woman preach? Not only should a woman preach, but a woman should step up and do whatever God has called her to do. Um, in, the, in the Bible, when we go to uh, Romans 16 and one, we have the, some may pronounce it Phoebe, uh, some who was uh, described as a deacon, but there was a woman named Julia who was yes. described not only as a deacon, or a servant of God, but an apostle. Yes. And uh, if you go to the book of Romans, the 16 and 7, you will find out that there are women and there were women apostles in the Bible. There is a yes. scripture that men tried to use against women to That's keep right. silent, but there was a situation where women had to come to men's rescue and mm -hmm. there had been chaos in that particular church at that particular time. And so even then women had to speak up. So should a woman preach? Yes. Should a, should a woman pastor? Yes. Because a woman, it is a woman that's going to step up and do what thus says the Lord. It is a woman that has been endowed with a season of boldness that oh, will stand oh, wow. in times like these. See, there are times, even if we take it back to the book of Genesis, when, when men like to use a and coming into the world through Eve. Well, it was Eve's boldness that made Adam bow down. So yes, yeah. a woman should preach. And yes, she <laughs> should be an apostle. I Jesus. am an apostle of God. And yes, I stand on that because I know it was him that touched me and it was him that endowed me with the Holy Ghost. Wow. And you know what? I, I, I just enjoy talking to you um, the Apostle Owens, because she is definitely an apostle. She knows what an apostle is. Some don't know what it is. So we're not going to get into apostles um, right now. But the thing is, is that um, if a woman can be a construction worker, come on, she be barefoot and pregnant and cooking in the kitchen, um, and then she could go to work and she could bring home the bacon or cook the and cook the bacon, <laughs> go shopping, take care of them chillings, all that kind of stuff, men maintain the household and the man and, right. and then do, but we can't preach. Something right. wrong with this picture, you know, but you, you, right. I'm, um, I'm sorry, a uh, pastor Angela Walker, cause we, we moving on along. Come on, come yes, on, come on, yes. come on, come on, come on. The Bible tells us in second Peter one and 10 to make our calling an election oh, sure. Jesus. Yes, Lord. To be <laughs> certain of what God has called you to do. There is a secular song that asked the question, what's wrong with being confident? And Peter said, being confident, Paul said, being confident of this very thing, that the work that he has begun in you, he is faithful and capable of completing that. Yes. We have to be confident and knowledgeable, knowing what God has called and commissioned and anointed us to do. Because yes, the yes. Bible lets us know in Rome whom he called, he justified and he qualified and he glorified us. And, mm. and, and men cannot, they cannot deny, the woman of God said last week that they cannot 
did not fruit. Hallelujah. It cannot be denied when the glory of God is upon you, when you walk into the room and shift the atmosphere because of the power and the authority that you walk in. And see, it's it's not arrogance, it's not cockiness, but it's confidence. Right, right. You're not gonna stare me down, you're not gonna shut me down, and you're not gonna bully me because I know who I am. Hallelujah, glory to God. And I know the authority that God has given me. You've got to make your calling and election sure because God called us, then he elected us, he chose us, he cast lot. And he said, I want her. Hallelujah. My God. Listen, you're watching a godly woman's view. And we're talking about should a woman preach. And we're going to get to the pastor part. And we're really touching on it right now. But the thing is, is that I love these women because they know how to stand in their place. They know who they are. They know what they have to do. They know how to speak. And, you know, this is something that I believe that women have. I mean, that God has chosen women to do a job and when we do it we do a perfect job isn't that something okay overseer uh simix amen i just want to add on to what my sister uh pastor was saying earlier about uh, women uh being filled with the spirit of god that th- that she was god breathed from the very beginning <laughs> God breathed by the Ruach of God, the very spirit of God. Even when we were created, they were equal in the beginning. Jesus even said that, that he made them equal. Sin came into the camp and created an inequality. But then Jesus came to set women free. Women, you are loosed. And we have been taught that, that woman thou art loosed. We know that when he talked, to the woman that was caught in adultery. Even then there was inequality with the man. How come the man wasn't gonna be stoned? No, they wanted to stone the woman and they wanted to embarrass her and bring her out there like it takes two to tango. It took two to create the sin, but they brought her out there. But Jesus specifically loved her and spoke to her and said, where are your accuser? He he, He forgave her right then and there on the spot. So we see all throughout history, women have been oppressed because they were oppressed because it was a plot and a plan of Satan. And that's why we're being attacked now, trying to be shut up, trying to be put down, trying to be oppressed to say you can't preach. And 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 there are some that will try to oppress you. But listen, God called me out and and brought me out of Egypt to bring me into the promised land. Who are you to so take, and just, take and have a God complex to put a woman, so to speak, in her place? God has yeah. already given us a place and okay. a place in him. Now, there is someone in here that on, on this screen that is refuting what we're saying. And that's good because y'all could jump in and help them out. Jesus Christ, he says, had female assistants, but they were never upgraded to apostleship. But that's his word, not the Lord's word. And I just want to add now, one he, more. He's, one more he's thing. an apostle, Christopher uh, Crown. Well, I just want to add one more thing to that. I just want to say that as a, if we, uh, we talked about this last week, I want to remind everybody that when we were in the upper room or when they were in the upper room, there were women there as well. And they were yes. disciples of Christ followers of Jesus, which is what we are. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost as well. So if there was a problem with that, God's Holy Spirit would never have come upon them and they would never be able to go out and minister. So we need to think about that. Who all is saying that it's not so? Why are we here and being effective today? We are. And and, and you know, there's a woman that Murray Jeter, she says, a woman can carry the word, labor with the word, and then deliver the word. But you said what? She can't speak the word. The devil is a liar. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, Evangelist Knight. Oh my goodness, all these hands going up. Bless y'all, <laughs> Evangelist Knight. Certainly, a woman can preach. If you go back to Old Testament. For y'all, but go ahead. Are you ready for me? Yeah, go ahead, I'm ready, go ahead, answer. <laughs> Jose 4 and 6 say we perish due to the lack of knowledge. When you yes. reject knowledge, then you are rejecting God. And he's not going to sacrifice his son because of our ignorance no more. 
Sure, a woman pre. God used women in the Old Testament. He used women in the New Testament. Look how he Same. used Deborah. Deborah judged both men and women. Look how he used Abigail. Abigail went and stopped David from killing her husband because he was cruising and had a bad attitude. But she took on from Dave, from her husband, went and met David, kneeled down, and David had to yield to her and change his mind. Should a woman preach and God tell you to preach? I ran from my calling because of doctrine. And they caused me to be afflicted by God when he laid his hands on me. So now you want to know, do God call a woman to preach? I advise those who say that he don't. You need to go to God for yourself. Because you may have to give an account of what you're doing and the okay. day of judgment. Lord, have mercy. Yeah. Apostle Karen Bettis Davis. Oh, my God. Well, there are a couple of things that I want to say. First, before we get into the apostleship, I just want to point out that in the Old Testament, uh, in 2 Kings, there was a woman by the name of Huldah who ran a school right, right. for prophets. And so we see right. in even in the Old Testament that God has put women in charge. And what's interesting is when the king gets a word, he doesn't like the word. Uh, that he that, that he receives from one prophet. So he attempts to go, Jeremiah, I believe. So he attempts to go to her and she is bold enough to say to the king, like, do you really think I'm going to change the word of God? Do you really think I'm going to give you a soft word? Um, and so she raised many female prophets for God. Uh, but also I want to talk about, and, and you know, what's, what's really interesting, and I want to say to the man of God who is who was stuck with this question that one of the things that you have to do, Bishop Bismarck told me years ago, he said that the Bible is absolute truth, but it is not the only truth that exists. So what that means is that we need to study people like Josephus, Eusebius, that we need to look at some historical documents right, so that we see right, what's right. actually wow, happening back behind wow, the scenes. Wow. Because if you do those things, you'll find that the woman that he meets at the well, that her name is actually Fotini. And uh, she has this experience with God after being married and now living with a man. And he gives her living water and tells her that she'll never thirst again. Well, not only does she begin to serve Jesus, but her sons, her sister, and all of her family. And they are there on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost is dispensed to the people of God. And if you look up her story, uh, it's amazing because in the Catholic church, they know this, they celebrate her, but in the Protestant church, uh, you know, we just call her the woman with no name, you know, the woman with all of these husbands. But when you right. study the work that she did, that not only did she win her city for God, but she traveled and she won nations for God. As a matter of fact, what they say is that she was so anointed that when they would send the guards to watch her when they put her in prison in Rome, uh, that the guards would get saved, that they would get filled mm. with the Holy Ghost, they would be saved. Right, she is the yes. only one the only person where at her death, she is the only one other than Jesus Christ where they said she did not die, she gave up the ghost. Wow, this is powerful, listen. And so we have watching. to understand that if we're going to sit in an opinion, we better be careful because God is the all knowing, all seeing God. And God is willing to peel back the layers of our ignorance for us if we are just open to what God has to show. There are many theologians, there are many fathers in the gospel, there are many historians who yes, will tell yes, you yes, about yes. these women. Um, we know that, uh, we talked about it last week, that when the Bible was canonized, they took a lot of women out, but I want to suggest that you read the Apocrypha, that you read some of the lost books, um, you read some of these things because you will find out from the very beginning that God loved women, that he used them and that they did some mighty things. I could go on and talk about others, but because uh, there's another woman uh, in Second John who's the elect lady of the house. Uh, we could talk about her, but there's a scripture, I think it's John 1 and 12. It says he gave us the power to become the yeah. sons of of God. And so that word sons there is both male and female. And female. Now, when you talk about God, uh, God has both, we're, we're created in his image and in his likeness. So that means that in God, there is both the male and the female expression 
uh, expression. So in Genesis, when it said that he hovered over the darkness in the deep and talked about that word ruah, how he hovered, how he brooded over it, that is a female expression of God. When we call him El Shaddai, the multi-breasted one, that is a female expression of God. God could not have made woman in his image if his image, if, if part of his image was not female. And so I just encourage you, my brother, to study. Don't just turn the pages, but also look at the history because you'll find that you're missing one of the most potent and powerful expressions because we all have to come into the unity the of, of the faith. faith. And you know, the, the um, in, in Ephesians 4 and 20, it talks about the fivefold ministry gifts. And it yes. doesn't say... Is there an, a male apostle? Yeah, right. Um, he's, he called the male evangelist, but he says that he has put some in, and that's the evangelist, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, um, um, for the edifying or the building up. So yeah. we need to know that there's no neither male nor female in Jesus Christ. I see you, um, uh, Laura Jackson, Pastor Laura Jackson, my um, God sister. We have see overseer Raymond. Wyatt Senior says, if not for the women of God, the church oh God. would be empty. Empty. He ain't never lied. Closed. But, Broke. Oh, you know what, y'all? The churches are full of women. Where are the men? And the men are supposed to lead out. And that's what I believe. Men are supposed to lead out in devotion, in praise, and lead the family. But since He's not doing that. Not a lot of them. There's a lot. Um, the women have to do it. So also Vanessa Canary Davis says, good evening all. There's just so many. I saw you, Apostle Le uh, Yvette Lavelle. Now, I see your hands up, but just hold this question I'm getting ready to give you because we got to move on. Um, has it ever been a time you wish you had to could have defended yourself for being a female preacher. Was there ever a time that you would have defended yourself for being a female preacher? Okay, Bishop Nemmons, you're gonna answer your question. I, I, I can, that was, a, you led right into something, right? Oh, then get, get out of here, we, we're on the same page. We walking and flowing in the spirit. Because, you know, I wasn't raised around any female pastors, preachers, evangelists, whatever. I didn't know any. And I, I I told God I was gonna stay on that organ and piano bench for the rest of my life. Wow. I got up in the choir rehearsal to teach a song. And I told the choir, this was my last Sunday because I was called to preach. Wow. <laughs> and and then said, what did they do? Fell on the floor? No, th <laughs> I, they looked at me like, you had four but hours. It was a one old lady came to me. She said, I knew it. You know, so I mean, it um, that influence wasn't there. So I know it was God. Wow. I know it was him. And you like um, one of my sisters uh, mentioned Acts chapter two. Um, when the spirit came, it was no male spirit. It was no female spirit. It was poured out on all flesh. So the women in the room that was there received it also. So the main thing is, like I, I think I said it last week, is to make disciples. Wow, you know, wow. It, that's, that's the main thing. Um, and you know, there's a, there's a um, overseer, Raymond Wyatt says this, absolutely, he said, I say it all the time. He says, I'm on a mission to evangelize men back to the church. And I believe that this is an evangelistic tool, this Zoom that we're on tonight. And that's evangelizing, and that's what we're doing. Okay. Even though we're talking about should a woman preach or should a woman pastor, this is an evangelistic tool that we're reaching out and we're bringing people in back to the place where they need to be, where they need to be in the word of God. I believe that is where God is taking us to at this time. Um, Apostle Brenda Hicks and then Pastor Brown. God bless you. Uh, beloved, listen, 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 listen. God is seeking true servants, not male, not female, but he wants true servants that's going to obey his word, do it his way, his will. And, and this is what he said. He said, don't maintain the status quo. Don't wow. worry about whether uh, men believe that you're called because there are some women don't believe. 
that you've oh, been God. called. That's right. A amen. Amen. That's it's true. And some there's some women that don't believe that women are supposed to preach. That's that's it. Exactly. That's the truth. But but God said, don't seek that. He said, seek His will, His way, and His word. Not seeking prestige, position, or power. That's not what He wants us to seek. But I want to ask you this question: Where in the world would <laughs> people have landed if the women? wasn't praying and preaching and proclaiming, pulling down strongholds, casting down imagination, and Lord, every high thing that exalts itself <laughs> against the knowledge of God. Where in the world would Peter be right now? Where would the Jews have been <laughs> if Mordecai had to pull Esther in to go Come to the on king? Now. Mm. <laughs> I can't with you. Lord, I'm resisting. <laughs> this is so powerful. He better not worry about who think we've been called, but oh, we better be man. about our father's business. And thank God that we have been called and recognized and, and walking in our calling. There's so many hands up. I'm just like, go. <laughs> let me just say so this. I, let, <laughs> let me just say this, and I'm done. Okay. The word tells us that it's the anointing that destroys the yokes and oh, removes no. the burden. Oh, not position. Jesus. Not position. Right. Not mm -hmm. prestige, nor the power to, to hold that position. But it's the anointing that removes mm -hmm. the burden off of people's lives and destroys yes, the Lord. yokes. And that's what we're trying to do. And Jesus said, because we can't save nobody. He said, I, if I be lifted, up, lifted from up from the earth, I'll draw. Now, oh, what, what, so you say, you saying we need the anointing. So what is, the what is the anointing? What Hallelujah. is the anointing? Hallelujah. The what spirit. is the anointing? The anointing is tapping into the all of God, to the, on, to the mind of God, yes, doing Lord. what God called us to do his way. Mm -hmm. Tap in. Mm -hmm. We need the oil of the mm -hmm. anointing to know the heart of God. Yes. Lord, how much? And I just want to say, go ahead, Pastor Anderson. The, Pastor Anderson. Okay, go ahead. Pastor, Pastor Anderson. St. John 10 and 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and a stranger. They, they will, will not oh my God. That's right. That's right. And every last one of us that is on this Zoom tonight are here simply because we heard his voice. Yes. Wow. If I you like really that. ask each heard. one of us, is there something else we would rather do? Come on. Than man. to be pastor. Hmm. I want to do the will of God. I think all of us would and say yes. Because mm -hmm. we didn't run to pastor and we were called into the pastorate. Yeah. Yes, and some yes. of us ran from the pastorate. Some yes, of yes. us ran from preaching. So it's yes. not like it's something that we just aspired to do when I grow up. You know, I'm going to be a preacher. I'm going to be a pastor. Most of us said, I'll sing in the choir. I'll usher. I'll teach Sunday school. I'll mm -hmm. clean the toilets. Yes. I'll cook. Yes. I'll do anything. But when we heard his voice, Yes. I could not deny Jesus. that he was calling us. Glory. And I ran, I ran from ministry because of the culture wow. that women were not called to preach and women were not called to pastor. So for five years, I ran like Jonah. I was sick. <laughs> And the doctor said, you Americans, you just want a quick fix. You want a quick fix. I, and, I, and I knew I was running from God and my prayer was, God, I know that this is you talking to me. I know it's your voice, but take oh, it from me. I don't want to preach. I'll sing. When it came to pastoring, God told me to pastor. And, and, and I was fighting that too because of women are not called you to pastor. A fine job. I was preaching a message at another church and the message God gave me was run and don't look back. And in the wow, midst of wow. preaching that message, <laughs> I had a battle with God. And people don't understand that you could be preaching to an audience and God will arrest you yes. at that moment Amen. and get your yes. attention. Yes. And I'm preaching to them. The woman said, run and don't slack unless I tell you. And God said, you're preaching to yourself. I yes. told you to pastor. And I'm trying to get that voice out of my head. And, and he's still I saying, mean, but I that's mean, you. Jesus. You're preaching to yourself. And after I got done ministering, I looked at my 
my admin and I said, I need to just go out the door. I wanted to just go home because they didn't understand the battle that I was dealing with, with fighting. I don't want to be nobody's pastor. And I said to God, God, those lives will be in my hand. Yeah. I will have to give an account of yeah. these souls. And I, I need to just give an account That's of mine. All it. right. But I got to give an account of their souls. When you hear the voice of God, it is yeah. undeniable. And he says, yeah. whom I love, I chase. And I scourge as a son. Yes. And so when he got after me, because he wanted me, all right, I was sick. And the doctors were saying, you have degenerative arthritis. And within a couple of years, all of your organs mm. are going to be deformed, your body, your okay. fingers, everything. And eventually you'll die. I am here today. Listen, Hallelujah. because I obeyed his voice. Mm -hmm. Did I come in? You know, Joyce Meyer said, if you got to do it, afraid, just do it. Mm -hmm. right now i did it afraid i can only tell you my testimony yes we know about lydia yes we know about thryphosia yes we know about mm -hmm. all of these women in the bible deborah Miriam, and all of that but what about us today we right. have a story and our story is just as powerful my pastor yeah. kept saying yes. to me daughter do you have something you want to tell me daughter did i knew what he was asking me but i didn't want to acknowledge it and i kept saying to him no i don't have nothing i want to tell you i wasn't lying because i didn't have anything i wanted to tell him but i knew what god had told me to do now i was getting ready to my husband said i want us to go to florida and it was our first flight and so i was like jonah i was scared to get on that flight because I knew that God was calling me. And I said, all right, I, I got to tell my pastor before I get on this flight because I don't want to kill my whole family. All right. So I got on the flight, but let me tell you how it worked. In my mind, the back of my mind, it was like, if I make it back home to Rochester, oh, we got to get through this. Come on, I ain't going to do it. But when I got back, I could not deny the encounter that I had yes. in the house in mm -hmm. Florida. That God will not, my, I asked my husband, I said, will God take this away? He said, you don't want to ask God to take it away. So yeah. I'm standing yeah. here. I don't have to defend what God has Come given on, me man. to do. That's I'm going to take the energy you and do what God has told me to do. Amen. Amen. That's it. I just, I could, like I, that. could I tap just, in now? I want to ask for a minute. For waiting so patiently. Hold for a minute for Elder Braxton. Y'all just waiting so patiently. But Eric Walker. He says he's a pastor. He's my nephew, matter of fact. He says there is neither male nor female. That's it. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Then I saw um, um, Nancy, co-pastor Nancy Darlene Baysmore said blessings, Pastor Spaulding. And so many have so many different comments. Y'all can go over and read them. I go back and I read all 200, 300, and then I respond to everybody. But let me tell you something, that we need to know what our calling is. And then after you know your calling, we need to walk in our calling and yes. we are not to be afraid. We And I heard somebody say earlier, we should not feel as though we're being bullied. Somebody is trying to um, dumb us down. You know, because there's times when I felt that people were trying to dumb me down for just pastoring. Matter of fact, my husband, mm -hmm. it's so funny, we laughed about it um, a couple of weeks ago. And I said, you know, notice if I go to a church by myself without you, even though I'm a pastor, they don't pay me no mind. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I come in with Bishop, elect Spalding, they go, oh, bless you, Bishop. What the heck is this? <laughs> But the thing is, is that I told him, I said, I said, oh, they respect you more. He said, well, I just, no, don't even give no excuse. All right, don't even try. But the thing is, is that, you know, still some people cannot accept yeah. you being in ministry, ministry leaders. And we need to really um, just not be afraid of that and keep doing what God tells us to do because we don't want to be beat with many stripes because yeah. there's souls to be saved. There's lives to be changed. There's bodies to be healed. There's people that need to be delivered from, from drugs and alcohol. There's just lawyers and doctors that need to come to know Jesus Christ for themselves. We cannot stop just because somebody else don't believe that okay, we should man. preach, that we should be a pastor, that we should be a bishop, that we should be an apostle. But we need to stand upon the word of God knowing that he's able to do abundantly and above all that we can even ask or think and whatever God 
God is going to do, he's going to do it, and he's going to do it through us. Lord, use me. That's what I said. Lord, Come on, man. here I am, Lord. Here's my yes. hands. Yes. Use my yes. hands. Use my feet. Use my mouth. God, yes. I'm available yes. to you for you to use me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because there's some folk that, listen, they preaching and they men, and I, and I said this to a great man of God that went on to be with the Lord, Elder Scrivens. And Elder Scrivens, I said, how is it? That somebody that could be gay can, and I was young, I was like 16 years old, be go gay, ahead. and they could preach, and they could Come pastor, on. but here Come I'm on. an evangelist, I don't smoke, drink, and stuff off of us, Come and on. I said, but I can't lead the people, I can't preach, preach the people, he Come said, on. well, daughter, you got a point there, I said, thank you oh. very much, but the thing is, is this is what we need to see, that listen, yes. God is doing the calling, it oh, ain't God. man, yes. Yes. it's yes. not man, yes. Yes. It's not woman that calls you. It's God. Oh, let me yes. shut up. This is just too much for me. Lord, Lord have mercy. Oh, yes, let me let awesome. me. Um, yes. where am I at? Where y'all all got your hands up, Jesus? Pastor Brown, go ahead. Come on, you. Oh, I'm sorry, Thank Pastor you. Brown. Right after Braxton, because she haven't said one word. Um, Evangelist <laughs> Tamara, I know you had your hand up. You're, well, you should, girl. Yes, I just. <laughs> Yes, I better jump in here because if I don't, I won't be able to speak. But one thing I want to say is, is that you have to be delivered from public opinion. Come yeah. on, man. The only way you want to preach the gospel that you can't care what other folks are doing, yeah. and what other folks are saying about you. It doesn't yes. matter what they call you is what you answer to. Yeah. Now, yeah. I believe that the reason why um, people have a, a problem with women is because, as you said, uh, many women said it before, that it started in the garden. I just want to uh, read this in just this translation because it's powerful. And then I'll go ahead and share what I want to say. This is in, I believe, the Message Bible. The Lord said, Genesis 3 and 15, I'm declaring war between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. And her seed will wound your head, but your seed will wound the heel. And what happens is when you talk about the head, you're always talking about the one that has the authority, the power. And the enemy does not like the woman because the women's assignment is to go for the head. We're always going for the head. You look at Deborah, she had to go to the head. She had to go to yeah. the rock and command the man of God to do what God called him to do. And yes. then and she had to go and tell the man of God that the, the weapon that God was going to use is not going to come from him, but another woman. And what did the other woman do, JL? She went for the head. Come then on, she now. she takes that tip peg and knock that man's brains out, she went for the head. Then yeah. you got Anna. You talked about Anna in the Bible. Anna, she had to birth Jesus in the spirit because spirit and then natural. Anna birthed Jesus out in the spirit. She travailed for him till he was formed in Mary. But think about Anna's assignment. It wasn't just about Mary carrying the baby. It was about Mary, the girl who had to Come get on, to the point to carry the baby. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of times when we women we are doing the groundwork, we're doing the dirty work. We're yes. not sitting up here yes. trying to shine. Amen. But we're digging out the roots. Laboring. We're dismantling, amen, demonic structures that have been down embedded into this religious system. The yeah. other thing, Jehoshaphat daughters, they came in and bust up a meeting that was for Come the on. old boys club. And yes. they said, look, give me my yeah. inheritance. Give me. Just because I'm a I'm woman, you can tell me I can't get my inheritance and my father died in his right. own sin. Mm -hmm. And God mm -hmm. changed the law because of a woman and today, that same oh, law Jesus. is still established in the Jewish culture where women in the Jewish culture can now own property. Come on, man. With that women. So oh, God, when people God. say that women ain't called to preach, women called to more than preach. Then you got Abigail. She had to stop the warrior inside of David and speak to the king inside of David. So David missed the throne. Because ahead. David had to oh, overthrow God. a system that Beautiful Saul set woman, up. God. So when they say that women are not called to preach, God used women all the time. And so I believe that because we are called, we are the weapon. Oh, we are Come a super on. weapon. God always revolutionized things with the women. Holder yeah. started a revival. The first yeah. revivalist was Holder. So she had to go to Josiah the prophet, I mean, Josiah yeah. the king, and said, look, this is what yeah, the Lord scroll. is saying yeah. in these scrolls. And you need to do that. And what he did, because he obeyed the woman of God, he caused revival. He started dismantling all the idols, 
all wow, the things wow, that were wow. going yeah. on in the system. This is why the devil hates us because we're going to tell the truth. Right. Yes. 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 To get out. The truth is going to yes. set us free. Exactly. And that's exactly. why. Are we called to preach? Absolutely. I was yes. called to preach when I was dying of AIDS. The Lord I had an encounter with the Lord. I mm -hmm. fasted, I prayed, because that say was the diagnosis back in the day. Y'all talk about that pandemic. I survived that pandemic. Oh, and God. the Lord told me, he said, yes. Michelle, do yes, not take did. that medicine or you'll die. But if you stay in my presence, I will keep you because I called you to be a prophet. Go not ahead. only did he speak to my yes. now, but he spoke to my future. And now 30 years later, here I am because I've been called to preach. And if we don't preach, then the world will not Woe be saved. Me. Because Woe God me uses Woe women me. to birth the new thing that's mm -hmm. coming forth. When okay. Deborah went forth, she did what she had to do. The Bible said that the children of Israel stayed out of bondage for 40 years. It was yes. the most of the time when they went in bondage 10 years, 20 years after wow, the judges came. Wow, but wow. she was the only judge that operated in three or four offices at the same time. Yeah. She was the mother of Israel. I'm going to have to cut you off. She was the property. She was the drive and she was the military leader. She mm -hmm. sat under a the tree, but then she shifted and she yeah, moved into the spirit warfare battle and she went with Barack to make sure he did the job correctly yeah. because she had the word of the Lord. Not only that, she was a worshiper and she knew how to worship God so she was able to ascend Jesus. into the hill of the Lord to get instructions from God oh, so God. she can tell the people what to do. Yes, women are called to preach. Amen. Lord, yes, Lord, Lord. Jesus. Pastor, Amen. Pastor, Pastor Brown, listen. Woo, this is so powerful. Tamara, you're going to be right after Pastor Brown. But why are we even thinking about this? When we're talking about a woman pastoring, should, I mean, should a woman preach? Should she pastor? Now, this is the question. I want you to hear. If a woman pastors, is it considered usurping the authority wow. over a man? Now y'all think about that while Pastor Brown is coming, then Evangelist Tamara E. Williams, then um, Walker, then Knight, then Apostle Davis. This is so hot. I mean, the uh, audience is going bananas over here. God bless you. I see all of y'all comments. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, babe. Praise the Lord. This is about as loud as I can talk again. Lost my voice. But I want to say one we thing. Hear you. Uh, several of the women, which you all have been phenomenal tonight. And I didn't want to say much tonight, um, but a lot of you have said things that I was saying. And I go back, and it's funny how uh, men uh, say that women shouldn't preach and pastor, or they want to deal with gender. But what are you going to do uh, when it's time to go with Jesus and you be the bride of Christ? So men, do you have a problem with being the bride of Christ? If you're going to have a problem uh, with us preaching and pastoring? If you have a problem with gender, then you should say, Lord Jesus, why are you calling me a bride? I'm mm -hmm. not a woman. Just mm -hmm. like we are all sons of God. So there are some things we need to take note of as we begin to talk. Another thing that came to my mind, and uh, Pastor Anderson alluded to the fact uh, about, uh, help me Holy Ghost, Esther. If Esther had not interceded, then the children of Israel would have been uh, destroyed. She had to intervene for them. I, another thing that came to my mind, we can't forget about Ruth. Ruth was phenomenal in her call. And a Ruth, who was not a Jew at the time, she was considered a, a heathen. Mm -hmm. She was a Moabite woman. We know how the Moabites came to be, uh, the mm -hmm. incest with Lot and his two daughters. So you begin to look at, but God used her. And she is recorded in the Bible of being a, yes. a, a, a the great, great, great grandmother, the ancestor of Jesus Christ. You go back mm -hmm. again and you begin to look when uh, Samuel was being called. And someone says, should a woman preach? Well, Samuel did not know the voice of the Lord, and he went to Eli three times. On the fourth time, oh Eli God. said, tell him, uh, yes, Lord, your servant hear it. So when you're telling us, if God hasn't called us, you said, we don't know the voice of the Lord. And evangelist, I mean, excuse me, Pastor Anderson alluded to the fact, uh, I was going to go to John 10 and 10, which I preached from on Friday night. Uh, he said, my sheep know my voice. Well, mm -hmm. Samuel first didn't know the voice. He got some <laughs> uh, uh, help from Eli. But my yes. God, when God called me, I knew his voice. I didn't need anyone to tell me. I knew what God was telling me to do because when you belong to God, you have a relationship with God. You have a close, uh, uh, um, intimate relationship with him. You know his voice. And I told them the other night, 
Only me, only myself, and my mother would call. All those other women or all those other people in the church, they wouldn't turn around because they don't know her voice. But I could be blindfolded and I would know her voice. Oh, I know that God called me because my mother one time, just to uh, uh, strengthen, my mother was not saved. And a lot of unsaved folk would be coming up to me before I accepted the call to preach and then the pastor. And I tried my best to get away from it. I didn't want to do it because first of all, I was young. Um, second of all, I was a woman. And I know the hardship that women go through. But it reminded me that when God called you, he will qualify. And he has mm -hmm. qualified me. And I want to thank God because Pastor Anderson, her father, was an A1 supporter of me preaching at Greater Bethlehem Temple oh, Bear in Rochester, New York for many years. And he was the first one first wow. one in 1992 that alluded to the fact about me pastor and i thought he was crazy then and, and that's not to be offensive uh, i was just trying to be an evangelist and he spoke to me and it wasn't until many years later that i understood what was going on god was telling me through the man of god you're not only going to go and evangelize but i'm gonna make you a shepherdess you're going to wow, feed my wow, people wow, god wow. is looking for people with clean hands a pure ah. heart i don't want to offend anyone but if if we cannot pastor with clean hands and a pure heart, well, how exactly. come has gone into the bishopric and my God, you don't have the qualifications that the Bible oh, tells you to be a bishop. That's another, that's one another show. So okay. so there's a lot of different things that you attack the women, but we have lived the life that yes, God has the life. With. We have walked up right before him. And so you look at the different things God have always utilized. I have a, a book called All the Women in the Bible. And it's just phenomenal from the very beginning. God have always orchestrated that he would use a woman. And one thing I said, we don't have to be macho. I never have gone around and pushed my weight. Everywhere I've gone, men, honest to God, I've never seen so many older men that favored me. Bishop Rump, uh, Apostle Weston, who's not living. I went, if I would go to Oklahoma for my job. So, this is thing? good, Pastor and they Brown, but I'm going to have to me. cut you off. Go ahead. And when I get a chance to talk, you all caught me off. We're going we to we we let you have your own show with me, okay? <laughs> right, you all need your own talk show with me, uh, co-hosting or something. <laughs> but anyway, um, um, th th this is just wonderful. But I have a comment from the audience. He is from Guyana, West Africa, and he is an apostle. He says, no one can stop women. He says also um, that sure, the devil, this is what it is, he says, the devil is afraid of women. That's what he says. He says, this woman is loaded, praise God. But it, it's just so many that are making comments. This Pharrell um, Hill Richardson says that um, they're enjoying this. So if a woman could be a pastor, can she be a bishop too? All right, we, we stopping there, but go ahead, um, uh, Tamara, baby, go ahead. I didn't forget you. That's all right. Grace and peace again. I enjoy these women on tonight. And as I was sitting here, I just wanted to say something a little different than what everyone else was saying. But I was looking at Acts 9 and 36. It says, now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and honesty, which she did. The reason why I wanted to bring that scripture out is because God has given us the ability to be um, good in his sight and to execute the plans that he has given us even before our mother's womb. And so when it comes to the woman, women are midwives in the spirit. There are many times people have called on a woman to help push them to the next, to help them with their family with all the issues that they're going through. And also when you mentioned reference as far as pastoring, the Bible says that I have given pastors after my own heart. And so if you are a woman of God who has the heart of God, you can pastor the people of God. Miriam was like a pastor. She led the people across the Red Sea with that tamarind. And God uses us to be an instrumental blessing. The Bible says that why wise woman build it up her house and the foolish woman tears it down. We have the power to build up, to tear down and to destroy. And God has given us the ability, amen, to pastor, to lead people back to Christ. And when you mentioned in reference as far as uh, with a man, I believe that as we um, 
execute our God-given uh, rights and our abilities as God has given some apostles and pastors, right? Um, that has nothing to do with the relationship that God has given because if we are equally yoked and who God has given us as a counterpart, that has nothing to do with the plan of God. Matter of fact, it extends the plan of God that you have someone by your side to help you execute the vision. And so um, when you think about as far as men and women, women have their own style and how they pastor. They have their yes, own flavor true. in the yes, kingdom yes, of God. Yes. And some people prefer women pastors because they have a softer touch. They're, they're nurturers. They know how to push and to pray. And, and we just yeah, have a different yeah. perspective when it comes to leading God's people. And so that's why I believe that women should not just preach, but also to pastor, to lead people back to Christ. This, this is so awesome. And thank mm -hmm. you for that. Of uh, 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 Pastor Walker, then Evangelist Knight, and Apostle Bettis. But we, we know somebody's going to answer this question about um, if a woman is pastoring, is she considered usurping the authority over a man? The, my scripture that I want to bring is coming from thank you. Um, 2 Timothy, the first chapter, verse 9, says, who had saved us and called us with an holy calling not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. He called us according to his purpose to walk alongside and to do the work of ministry. He called us because he purposed us before the foundation of the world. He knew that he would anoint us to preach. We had no idea. So many women have said tonight that we didn't get in this thing just to be called to, to pastor but we got in it to serve God and to serve his people. But he called us to a greater capacity that we had no desire, no inkling that he was gonna utilize us, but we had to say yes, hallelujah. We had to say yes, because we could not turn and go back the other way because he knew that we would be a reject and we did not want to be rejected by him. <laughs> we wanna be accepted. I remember yeah. the scripture when Jesus say, whom do ye say that I am? You talk about defending your calling. We don't have to defend it. Jesus say, some say you are Elias. Some say you're the prophet. And I preach the message. Do you know who you are? Oh, in my. spite of what they say. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, in yes, spite yes. of what they say. Do you still know who you are? He called us with a holy calling. And we walk in purpose, on purpose, because of his purpose for our lives. Wow. Awesome. Um, uh, evangelist Knight. Yes, and we as women in the ministry, we got silent. to learn how to turn those stumbling blocks into stepping stones. Every round should carry us higher and higher. You know, even if we are rejected and we know it's God in us, it's not we doing the preaching, it's the Holy Spirit in us who is preaching. And I, I must say my pastor, Pastor Dale Harrison, very supportive of my ministry when I was first called to preach. Even though I wasn't about the church and they say God didn't use women, the pastor Henry Durant, he gave me what they call a trial sermon. And guess what? They say God, they call women, but the poor pit were full of men preachers. They came to hear the sermon. So I, I want to encourage every woman out there. Because one thing might have been God call you is not a regular voice. That voice got all the way in me. Oh, I was God. talking in the parking day when he called me to preach. It sounded like the the, the the pocket mm. decks were rocks breaking into pieces, were just that powerful. And when he called me three times and I tried to run. And when I got in my Jeep, they locked the door and my clothes were soaking wet. And he looked at he told me, said, look at you. I looked at my clothes, it wasn't water. It was oil pouring out of my skin. So Come if you man. know for sure that God called you, the devil in hell can't stop you. Because if it's hard to be And another thing he said, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Watch yes. our men. We're on our way. Come on, man. <laughs> Overseer oh, Linda Starmix and then Apostle um, Bettis Davis. God bless y'all. Y'all are just awesome. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, we, we, you know, to answer the question about uh, can, uh, if a woman is a pastor, is she usurping a man? First of all, we need to understand what the pastor is again. Uh, Jeremiah 315 and where we we have heard that it said and I will give you pastors according to mine heart which shall feed 
with knowledge. When we look at the root word of pastor, the word is raw off. And that means to tend the flock, to shepherd it, or to be a shepherdess, to associate and to befriend and to care for. And it is women's natural role and instinctive to care for people. So it's easy for a woman to be a pastor. Now, when we talk with people think men come back and they might say, oh, well, you're usurping a man's authority. And according to what we read in Paul, with Paul, what Paul wrote in the Bible, but look at the two realms. You have the earthly realm where you have a husband and a wife. And in that realm, the man has the last word, the authority because God said that's how it's supposed to be. But then you have the spiritual realm. And what I find is people get that all mixed up. They try to bring the spiritual realm into the natural realm, which is the earthly realm. When it comes to being an authority as a pastor, I've had to face that situation where men try to challenge me. I had an assistant pastor one time and he didn't want to really uh, uh, honor the authority that I had. He ended up leaving the church because he had another man telling him, well, you shouldn't be under that woman. You shouldn't be under that woman. You're in sin. And he ended up leaving. He got all confused and he ended Jesus. up not being saved. He oh, just fell away. He backslid. So he, he was confused because he had the enemy talking to him. But I tried to help him to understand. And I hope that we're helping somebody tonight. You can't. Oh, yes, you're helping us. Hallelujah. You cannot mix the earthly realm with the spiritual realm. God said, you are the light of the world. He didn't say, men, you're the light. He didn't say, women only are the light. He said, ye are the light of the world. I have called you. So if you, he said, I can't put, you can't put the light under a bushel and hide it. If you have the anointing, and we talked about the anointing earlier, when you have the anointing and you are called, you are going to speak. You're going to tell the truth. I don't have to have a church building to tell the truth. I can sit with a marathon on the corner and have done so and could not set up, preach the word. Didn't want to preach as my sister was talking about earlier. But when I was in the bar, I sat on the corner and every time in the bar, corner in the, in, the, in the bar telling people about Jesus. I had a drink on the table. We couldn't drink for nothing. Every time I would take a drink, I would hardly I almost get sick. But when I came to the bar trying to be social, with everybody else, I would sit and talk about church and talk about God. And this one person said, you're always talking about God. Maybe you should be a preacher. And I never even thought about it. It wasn't on my mind. I was running from God because why? Because my mama was a preacher and I was trying to be not be like her. But when you are called, you can't run from it. When you yeah. have that calling in your life, you're going to speak. When you call God, gonna, he's the hound of heaven. He's going to chase you down till you do what you are called to do. So that's, that's, what, that's, that's my it. experience. I couldn't stop. I couldn't run from it. The Lord wrote me in and I had to yield and bow to his authority. So yes. nobody can silence you. If you're going to be obedient to God, God, you want to be that light. No man can silence you. You get in the church. If they don't want to accept what you have to say, you keep on being who God calls you to be. And you and you know, um, something about my husband and I, we compliment one another. When we got before we got married, we were both preaching. So he had already said, I'm not gonna stop you from preaching. That's what God called you to do. And we've never had an argument in the 35 years about ministry. I know I'm pastor, and he says, you're the pastor, but some people want to put me in a box and says, no, you're the first lady, you're the elect lady, you the some kind of other lady, lady this. No, I'm pastor Spalding, and I, you know, I sometimes I hate to go there, but that's who I am. I have never walked around. I like cute hats, but I've always been a pastor. I haven't worn them little cute hats and all that kind of stuff, and my husband's fine with it. You know, but he knows you're the pastor. He just told me, you're a pastor. He said, do not let people put you in somewhere that you that God didn't mm -hmm. call you. I That's said, right. because I'm, I'm your wife. That's it. I'm your, I love you. I'm your wife. I says, but I'm a pastor too. When we go home, I'm your wife. You my husband. Say it again. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? When we at church, you my bishop and I'm the pastor. That's Amen. It. And my children have been like that. They said at church, I was pastor. They called mm -hmm. my husband, I'm um, overseer at the time. And then when we came home, that's mommy and daddy. So my children understood that. Yes. But there are people that try to take and put all these names and titles. Yes. I'm like, Jesus, what in the world is it made? I'm like, but well, you know what? I like what y'all are saying. 
um, when you said, listen, you can't worry about other people's opinion. You can't. And I believe that. Okay, Apostle Bettis, Davis, Karen, Bettis. Well, the first, the first thing that I was going to say is um, that um, I, um, not only do I not usurp my husband's authority, but I go under my husband's authority because as a wife, he is my covering. Exactly. That's right. that, yes. And so I go... Uh, I go with his approval. I go with him cheering me on. I, mm. you know, and I had, I had a very unique church. Um, my church was in the beginning of my church, it was 70% white. Um, wow. I have actually pastored more men than women. The organization that I shepherd right now, there are 200 uh, young men who are coaches and, and players. And I am, awesome. uh, you know, I am the ecclesi ecclesiastical leader you know, over that organization, and they don't have a problem with that. Um, to people who say, you know, for me, uh, you believing in me is not a is not a heaven or hell issue. And to be honest, <laughs> I don't I don't really care what you think of me. Um, what matters to me is that I'm pleasing to God as His daughter. Yes, yes. that I complete the assignments that He gives to me. If you want to have an exchange about it, I'm willing to have an exchange, but I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to exactly. throw scripture at you. Mm -hmm. Listen, there is a church on every corner. Find one that has your <laughs> flavor of chicken. <laughs> and let's move on. But what mm -hmm. you do not do, so it, right. you know, and, and somebody said that, you know, when women pastor, they have a soft touch. I have never been known to have a soft touch. Okay. I, I I say it the way it is. Um, just like I, I'm a it truth, is. I'm a truth teller. That's what I was born to be. And it. so if if you have an issue with it, you could walk from my church to another church where they may believe what you believe, and that is okay with me. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, my it. husband believes it. Uh, uh, my children believe it. And the 200 men that I cover, men and they children believe. believe it. So I'm all good over here. God bless you. <laughs> I love it. I tell you, um, when you know your you you know who you are and where you stand, that is awesome. And it's it's really awesome because we have husbands that do cover us, you know, mm -hmm. and they don't have a problem with it. Hello, mm -hmm. praise Jesus, hallelujah. As Lil Duval says. I'm living my best life and I ain't going back and forth I, with nobody. No, right, it make right, right. no sense. Make no going sense. Back and forth. I'm not going to do it. You can't do it. Apostle Hicks. And listen, we're going to have to stop y'all. This has been so good. Oh my God. I can't even read the, all these comments, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to, I'm going to read them and I'm going to definitely acknowledge them. Go ahead. Apostle. Okay. So um, to answer your question, uh, are we supposed to use up uh, over the men? authority over men. We are all servants of God doing the will of God. No gender. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. It's God's agenda. Hallelujah. Mm. And God's word that we're doing. And I'm looking now at uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 11, 1. It says, follow me. That's what Paul says. We're, we're not here to boss you and say, oh, you're going to do the devotion and you're right. going to do this. Uh, we're servants right. of God. Feeding you the word of God, like praying that. over you, hallelujah, yeah. covering you when you go out and when you're coming in, giving you what does save the Lord through the word of God. And then if you go back into uh, chapter 10 and verse 31, it says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. <laughs> And that's what we're here. We are servants of the Most High God. I don't look at it as you serve. My father was my pastor. He didn't use right. authority over me. He gave, he fed me the word. And because he fed me the true word, nothing but the truth, I am who I am and what I am today. Not because he was my daddy saying, this is what you're going to do. You're going to go to church and you're going to sing in the choir and you're going to do this. You're going to pray. No, because he gave me the word of God. And he said simply, follow me as I follow Christ. Listen, mm -hmm. you've been watching a Godly Woman's View virtual talk show, and it has been awesome. And I believe that these women have answered the question. 
And they not only answered the question, first they answered the call that God had uh, called them. And they explained so beautifully um, so that the questions, the answers to the questions, but they also explained the difference between usurping and pastoring because there is a difference. And I am, I just take my hats off to all of you. Listen, a godly woman's view itself is a um, nonprofit organization with our 501c3. And we have been able to do some things um, over the years um, and just really over the months of feeding and buying new clothes and just so many different things. As a matter of fact, we just gave out some um, uh, graduation gifts, monetary gifts to people randomly and then to also um, people that um, we know that have graduated from either high school, college, I think um, one from um, what is it, elementary school. And we endeavor to continue to do this. And, and we don't like to do things around, I mean, we do things around Christmas, but I don't really like doing things around Christmas. You know, have Christmas, you know, I like to do it when nobody else is doing anything because I believe that that's what God has called us to do. We're givers um, as um, uh, um, a ministry, a godly woman's view. So I'm asking those of you that are watching and those of you that are even online or guests that would desire to partner with us as we go for, to further the gospel of Jesus Christ, you can cash app me and I will make sure the money gets to a godly woman's view. Um, it's um, winner, w, uh, dollar sign W-I, three N's, N-N-N-E-R, one, two, three. Again, it's dollar sign W-I-N-N-N-E-R, one, two, three. And there are those that have been able to give of, over the months, over the time, and partner with us, and I thank God for each and every one of you. And we get, we just, I, I just, I just love the way that God uses um different people in in different areas because you guys, y'all are awesome on all by yourself. Y'all can just get on and just have a show by yourself. But I just thank God for each and every one of you, and want you to continue to pray for a godly woman's view. But pray for me. Pray for me that I will continue to do the will of God. I think I've spoken to each and every one of you on the phone lately. And I tell you, y'all have encouraged me. You have blessed my soul to hear how sound you are. Because there's some folk that's not sound, but y'all are teaching sound doctrine. And that's what we need to hear. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to believe. Praise God. So we thank you once again for joining our virtual talk show on this evening with these beautiful ladies. But before they go off, they're going to tell you how you can reach them, what their um, name is and um, the name of their ministries, what time they come on, if they're virtual or if they're uh, uh, um, in-house or whatever it is and what they're doing. I know there's some conferences coming up. Please share that with us. Please share it on my page, okay? Please share it on my profile um, so that I can be able to put it out some more because I believe that God wants people to know about you, you, and you. Again, this is the worldwide ministry. I thank you, um, uh, uh, Apostle Bettis Davis. You can see it. She put it already. You can type it. You can just see it. Armed is a new model for spiritual warfare and intercession. She has her own powerful ministry, but they're going to tell you that yourself that they have a book or whatever they do have. Um, um, Apostle Brenda Hicks. Yes. <laughs> You're first. I love you. God bless you again. My name is Apostle Brenda Lumsey Hicks. I am the senior pastor of the Mount Calvary Missionary Church right here in the beautiful anointed city of New Brunswick, New Jersey. I have service in-house every Sunday morning, starting at 11 a.m., or you can catch us on YouTube. You can catch us on um, uh, the, oh shucks, on Facebook, hallelujah, on uh, MCMC. Uh, please join us. We would love to have you. Amen. God bless you. And if you're ever in the city or in the area, come on down the New Jersey Turnpike. It's at nine. It's at nine right on into Route 18 North. 
and it'll bring you right on to Mount Calvary Missionary Church. I'm looking for you to come in the place one day. God bless you. Wow, what an infomercial. I love it. Um, evangelist Knight. <laughs> um, I'm Evangelist Prophetess Ella Knight. I'm with the Ascended Minister of Jesus Christ, the Total Anointed Frau Line of Jesus Christ. I have a book, How to Overcome the Spirit of Fear. Wow, can, where can they get it? Where can they get your book? Tell them where they could get it. Okay, you can get it from Amazon. You also can get it um, by online. It's, I've noticed it's in quite a few stores online, Books a Million. So um, you, uh, you can just write me. And right. also I'm on Facebook ministry, um, Evangelist Night on Facebook and enjoy the show. Thank God for this opportunity. Enjoy you too. Overseer Linda Stymax. Praise God. Uh, I've had an awesome time. Thank you awesome women awesome. of God for just blessing me tonight and all the other people. Um, I'm Linda Stymax uh, with Transformation New Life International Church. You can find me at Stymax101 at Outlook.com. Also, you can find me on Facebook and you can find our church at uh, Transformation New Life International Church on Facebook. We come on at 12 noon on Facebook on Sundays and uh, we're gonna be starting back our Bible study in August on Zoom, we do Bible study on Zoom. And we, uh, my husband also ministers and pastors with me, and he has a men's fellowship that comes once a month, and it's called Men of Valor. And we're having our Men of Valor conference on July 8th and 9th of this year. It's going to be a very exciting thing. It will be on Zoom and as live on, in person as well. So it's very that's exciting. That's uh, July 8th and 9th? Yes, July 8th okay. and 9th. Yes. Put it on my page so I can push it for you. Oh, thank you so much. God bless you all. It's been exciting. And we're going to be lifting you and all the women in prayer. We belong to a prayer group. So we're going to be lifting everybody in prayer. What you've done is set some captives free, free these two nights we've been on. And I, I love the, um, Pastor uh, Angela B. Walker. God bless. God bless girls in the house tonight. Yes. 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 <laughs> No. Oh, I tell you, it's nothing like being empowered by sisterhood. There yes. is power in the girls coming together and pushing the same agenda, which is God's agenda. I'm so excited just to be a part of this awesome panel, woman of God. I, I give honor to each and every woman of God that's here tonight. And as it's been stated, we must pray and lift up one another because the enemy, he is not a fan of ours and he does not care about us. I, I experienced something very horrific earlier this weekend. And it was, it was something. And I'm just so grateful just to be here because you know when you are a threat to the enemy, he will do things and, and, and uh, throw tactics your way. But when you know that God is not through with you yet, you keep pushing on and we praise God for that. I'm located in the Birmingham, Alabama area, Pastor Angela Walker, yes. ABW Ministries. I thank God for each and every one of you. I put information on your page so I don't have to keep going over it. God bless you. I love you, Lady Spaulding, Pastor Spaulding, Prophetess, Apostle, all those good things. <laughs> uh, <you know. laughs> okay, powerful ministry. Um, Bishop Eva J. Nimmons. Greetings again. Love I you. I want to thank our love Pastor Spaulding for having me and meeting all my sisters. Amen. I love you I'm here in Houston, Texas, and you can find me on Facebook. And I'm, my assignment right now is the New Oasis Kingdom Assembly here in Houston. And we, we do stream um, every Sunday at 10. Or you can find me on um, Fridays on um, uh, New Day Connection Radio, Gospel, Rhema Gospel Radio 101.5 FM right. here in Houston. Amen. Good. If anyone want to be a part of the show, just, <coughs> just shoot me an inbox message and we'll have you on the show. God and it's you. very good. Her program is very good. Oh, Elder Michelle Braxton. Lord. Praise the Lord. It was wonderful <laughs> being with you, women of God. We defied the odds. They say women can't be in the same room at the same time. Ooh. Amen. And honor That's each other. True. Amen. So we honor the Lord. Amen. That God has kingdom women. I uh, bring you greetings from Christian Fellowship Center Outreach Ministries, where my apostle is Pastor Joe David Rudolph, but I have my own personal ministry. MichelleBraxton's.com is my website. 
um, the Shell Braxton ministry is the ministry. Under that ministry is the Wall of Fire prophetic intercession, where I actually have a prophetic intercession manual, where I was privileged to teach women all across the world in a Zoom meeting that came together with my manual and it was, I was able to minister and teach with them, activate them in the prophetic. I also have a manual coming out, a spiritual warfare manual. I'm also on the bestsellers list with other authors, collective authors and a book Life After about people who have thrived from HIV and AIDS. And I've also had my own awesome. memoir out been with him in victory. Amen. And that is my own personal story of the encounter I had with the Lord, what I shared during this broadcast, but also how I got to the place that I am and the calling that God has placed on my life. Thank you, woman of God. You have such a generous heart and soul. You don't mind sharing the stage with other women and supporting other women. We honor you, uh, Pastor Anita Spaulding. Thank you for having me and all the other women of God. It's wonderful to meet you. Hope we can do this sometime again in the future. God bless you. Thank you. Very good. That's awesome. Evangelist Tamara E. Williams. Bless everybody. I'm so excited. Uh, it's also one of tonight and to hear your wisdom. My name is Evangelist Tamara E. Williams. You can follow me on Facebook, Tamara E. Williams, or my ministry, ETW or my business. I have a business called Lady T Consultant and um, I am the ministry and business consultant. So I help churches out uh, with their ministries, um, leadership development and training. And also um, through my ministry, I also teach uh, women in ministry as far as hermeneutics, homiletics. And um, soon I will also be doing one-on-one -on -one coaching session as finding your style of preaching. And so um, if anyone's assistance in developing your ministry, developing your business, reach out to me and I will be a great help to you. God bless you all. God bless you. I'm going to be calling you. I have something in mind. Uh, Pastor C. Anderson. Come on, Pastor C. God bless you. Girl. Bless you. Bless you. It has been an honor and a, it, it's been a pleasure to be on with such yes. dynamic women. Y'all make me feel like I don't know nothing, but <laughs> it has been, uh, Get out of here. <laughs> it, it's just awesome to sit here. I like to sit and I like to hear and I like to learn. So this is just awesome. Pastor, you are doing a phenomenal job. If they don't get it in the back, they just won't get it because they had enough scripture on here tonight to understand we are here to do what God has told us to do. We're not running. We're not going to fight. We're not going to hijack the office of the man. We're simply going to just do what God has commissioned us to do. We know his voice. We heard it and we're going to obey it. So I have um, a conference that's coming and yes. I think it's just amazing. We are in our eighth year of Heal Me Now. And wow. so we have the unbreakable Heal Me Now family conference. We started as a retreat and we moved it to a conference and we have some phenomenal speakers. Go to my page and look at it. The date is September 8th, 9th, 10th and 11th. Just go to my page instead of me going from every speaker, but it's going to be wonderful. One of the things I would like to mention is we have um, Pastor Aaron Porter, we have Pastor Christina Staten, and we have Evangelist Karen Monroe, who is dealing with uh, COPE, C-O-P-E, and it is children of the priesthood everywhere. We want wow. you to bring your children. Bring your That's children. Awesome. I have eight. I'm a mother of eight. I have six of my children that work hard in my ministry. And a lot of ministries, the children get up and they leave, they leave. and they yes. want no part. We want to get into the brain, the spiritual That's brains nice. of your children and help them to flourish in your ministry, wow. right? Give them the tips and tools, how to understand the hurt of their parents, how their parents as pastors are hurt, how, how the church, people leave in the church. We want them to leave Heal Me Now knowing how to cope as a pastor's child, as a first mm. family, 
All right. So get your children, get them registered. It's not the $200 registration. The registration is actually only $50. The hotel is $119, $116. Wow. So just come. It's This is an affordable conference. <laughs> affordable. <laughs> Right. One of the registrations I did was up 260 something dollars, I believe. It's fifty dollars. The hotel is 116. So register, go and make you know your hotel reservations. It's gonna be dynamic. Four nights of power, and it's always powerful. Wow. All right, Apostle DeWanda Owens in the house. <laughs> I love her. I have had a wonderful time. Wonderful time. This is this has been great, 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 great. Yes, I love uh, I love the uh, collaboration. I I have just enjoyed myself. I have I have really enjoyed myself. I thank God for each and every last woman that's on the panel, and I I thank God that and hope and pray that we have encouraged other women not to run, not to the duck and and dive, but to stand up. I am uh, Apostle DeWanda Owens. I have uh, Do Global Ministries. You can find me at doglobalministries.org. Um, we are, the only thing we have coming up is July the 6th. We get on a plane and we travel from Dallas, Texas to Nairobi, Kenya. And we're there for two weeks for a men wow. for ministry that uh, I have to do over there. But wow. keep us in prayer as we yes, continue definitely. to do the work. Definitely. Hallelujah. I, it's a lot of women going. It was supposed to be some men. My, my husband couldn't accompany me this time. But we are we want men to come and stand with us. And yeah. so I just want to say that I have enjoyed the panelists and, and the panel. And keep us in your prayer. Yes. Oh man, this is so good. I I, I just want to mention um, Pastor Anuk Nayak. He says we love you, women of God. He is from India. He is a supporter of everything that awesome. I do in America, and thank God for him. So we have our pastor, Doctor Brown. <laughs> Praise the Lord, and I thank God for being a part of the God bless you. panel. You're such a great cloud of witnesses. I'm sorry, I'm extremely tired. But we bring you greetings again from Highway to Heaven here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And uh, I can be found, Sharice, Pastor Brown, Brown. on Facebook. You can see us, Highway to Heaven, on YouTube. Some things me preaching and teaching there. We don't come on all the time, but when I feel late, I tell them, roll that camera, let's move it. Also, for those of you that may want to come to the Milwaukee area, Highway to Heaven will be having a revival August the 19th, and on August the 20th, there will be a concert, and we have uh, Evangelist Dwayne Gamble from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, Evangelist Dwayne Gamble from Baltimore, Maryland would be our guest evangelist, and then we would have a wonderful um, concert. But I want to say to you, all, you women, I would love to get some of you how many of you love to go to Dubai? October 2023, Lord said the same. We're gonna take another trip to Dubai. If you haven't been there, it's just a lovely place to go and relax. And since I see all you women that's here, I don't know if some of you may have been to the Holy Lands, but I'm trying to see who wants to go to the Holy Lands. You're bold enough, just go and we can do something there. So I love to travel. I just wanted to throw that out there. God bless you. It's been an honor. You are such a beautiful person. I love your name, Pastor Sharice Brown. I try not to mess it up. That's you did good scared. tonight. That's I did, part of you got I right up. Up. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's great. Listen, we have, let's do a drum roll for Apostle Karen Davis. Davis. <laughs> I love you. I absolutely I love, you <laughs> love you. Laughter is medicine for the soul. I just want to thank you. Um, this has been a tremendous time. Uh, yeah. I know that, um, you know, sometimes when we do ministry, we don't hit everybody, but we hit the ones that we're supposed to. Yes, and so yeah. I believe that we pierced some darkness, um, you know, and we liberated some women and set some women free. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yes, and so... 
I am just encouraged. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Karen Bettis Davis or Apostle Karen Bettis Davis. Uh, again, you know, I've, writ I've written a book. It's called Armed. My father was a Sergeant Major in the military. So a wow. lot of what I, a lot of yeah. what I um, like in the spirit realm to uh, is, is, you know, military terms and the things that I learned being the daughter of a soldier. Um, and then being the daughter of the God of angel armies, there's so many similarities oh, wow. there. Uh, you can meet, you can reach me at www.kbdavisworldwide.com. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, again, this chaplaincy, you know, uh, running this organization and then being a chaplain at the high school, um, keep me in prayer. These are some wonderful, incredible young men. Um, and we want to see them excel and do great things. Uh, and then, you know, uh, my greatest assignment is loving on this man that I have been in love with for the last 32 years. All right, girl. Uh, what I love most in life is being married to that man. And oh. so I, um, I, you know, I honor him because everything that I have done for the Lord, he has pushed yes. me and he continues to push me. Uh, you know, I think I told you guys in the beginning that I took a little break during the pandemic. So I got back in the pulpit last Sunday and he sat up and he said, you know, babe, this has been one of the greatest days we've had in a long time. Oh, wow. And I said, why? And he said, cause you got back in the pulpit, baby, because wow. that's where you belong. That's and so I will spend the rest of my life loving that man and thanking God that I have such an incredible support system. Wow. So I'm going to be somewhere kissing on somebody. <laughs> You know, uh, that's too much information. But anyway, <laughs> that, that's all right. Listen, um, this has been an awesome time. Yes. And those VIPs, very important people that have joined this broadcast tonight, we thank you. We thank you. There is nobody like God's people. God's yes. people are unique. They're the top of the heap. They're right. the zenith. They are awesome and unique. My husband says I'm stealing this stuff, but we're one. I told you whatever I say, you say. Yes. You know, we, we, we and thank you. him. Thank you, man and of God. We thank you, man of God, for thank coming you. and just being a part. Thank you. He was supposed to come on and give his view, but he said he might be a little bit too long. But um, I, I, you know how that is. But I thank God for him because he does... Like many of your husbands, they do support us. Yes. And I thank God for him. I I want for nothing when it comes to my Boaz, uh, Richard L. Spalding. Praise God. He is yes. just a wonderful man and he is humble. And thank God for him. And we just say to each and every one of you, thank you again for your um, uh, donations on tonight. And God bless you. And we'll keep in touch because I, you know, I have your phone number. I know where y'all live. You know, okay. Uh, I know where y'all are. And thank um, Bishop um, Nathaniel Gomillion. Yes. He has been really um, talking to me constantly about different things. And he's just empowering me. I thank God for Bishop um, Thomas um, Wallace, another man of God who pushes me. I'm telling you. And, uh, and it's just a good thing when you have you know, different ones that really see your worth and they push. And I'm telling you, these men of God call me during the course of the week. And I'm thanking God, not just them. There's a, a few of them since we have gone um, live, yes. um, global. There's so many men that call, you know, me or call my husband. Women call me. But, you know, I'm, I'm on the phone all day long sometimes. But thank God for them. And I love you with the love of the Lord. And there's nothing none of y'all can do about it. So there. We love you. All right. We love you. Love you. Bye -bye. Thank you. I love, love you all. Love you all. Love you. Nice to meet you. Thank you.